Hello everyone, Tini here. I hope you're having a fabulous day. Thanks so much for joining me. Well, I have a 12 by 12 collection pack. We're gonna make some pattern paper cards today. <laughs> and I also wanna share with you some brand new things um, as part of the collection suites that Photoplay is creating now. Um, so we're gonna first talk about the 12 by 12 collection pack. This is the Little Boo Thing 12 by 12 collection pack. How fun is this? I love the non-traditional colors of this collection. It's all about Halloween. The sticker sheet's pretty fabulous, although we're not using it today. We're going to focus on the pattern papers in here. Um, we're going to be using these on our card today. Now, we have some brand new items from Photoplay Paper that I'm super excited to share with you. First off, there's some brand new rub-on transfers. These rubber on transfers coordinate perfectly with the 12 by 12 collection and the pattern papers in there. But look how fun these transfers are. If you flip it over, you have some more images on the reverse side. There's greetings along with the images. And there's even the popsicle stick to help with the rub ons. So we're gonna be using some rub ons on our card today. If you're not into stamping, I think rub ons are the way to go. And I'm super excited that Photoplay Paper has these now as part of their collection suites. Okay, there is also some super fun chipboard stickers. This is the Little Boothing chipboard sticker pack. There's just one, one sheet. This is what the reverse, reverse side is. I would say the thickness of this is about the thickness of some foam squares. Let me show you. It's about the same thickness as foam squares. And I love this. Sometimes with foam squares, you have to put a lot on there to level it out on a card. Chipboard does it for you. So we're gonna be using some of these on our card today. They're adhesive back, so all you do is remove them and stick them, which is really nice. And so this is brand new to Photoplay Paper too. Now, last but not least, this is probably one of my favorite things because I haven't seen it before. This is called the Epoxy Dyes Paper. There's two sheets in here. I'm, I open them up. Let's take them out. Heavyweight paper. The reverse side is white, but these are dyes paper. These are meant to coordinate with some new epoxy shapes from Photoplay paper also. This is the Maker Series Epoxy Shapes. Okay, it, this pack comes with all the epoxy shapes um, and also some coordinating dyes. Let me show you. If you take out the sheet, first what you would do is this die set will coordinate with your dice paper. So you have the arrows, you have the thought bubbles, speech bubbles in square and circles. You have these shapes here that you can cut out. And then after you have them cut out, you can layer them with the epoxy shapes, which makes it so convenient so convenient and so quick. You can see they layer perfectly right over the shapes. So it makes an amazing embellishment on a card. It actually, actually adds to me adds value to your card. And I love that it adds texture to your cards too. So we'll be using some of these on our card projects today. And I'm so looking forward to this. Even this, you have the squares over here. You have these square epoxy shapes where you can cut out. So this is the clear epoxy shapes with the die set. Maker Series also has one. If you want to refill, Photoplay has you covered because there's also le uh, less expensive epoxy shapes set. This one's a little bit more because you're paying for the dies, but this one is less expensive for the refill. And I just love that. We'll be using this on our card today with the epoxy dies paper. I'm super excited and I can't wait to share my cards with you today. First off, what we're going to do is pick out some pattern papers and then I'm going to trim them down and then we'll jump in and get started. I picked out my pattern papers. I have three of them, but we're going to use the front and back on these two here. I'm going to tell you the names because you know the drill. Most of your favorite craft stores will sell these 12 by 12 sheets individually. Okay, this is the, the fabulous stripe, although I'm on the polka dot side. I'm gonna flip it around so you can see the stripes. We'll be using these on our cards today too. You have boo things. On the reverse side of boo things is some spider webs. 
we'll be using these on our card. And then lastly, I'm just going to be using a, few, a little bit of the stripes on the skulls, 12 by 12 paper. So these are the pattern papers that we're going to be using. Now I'm going to trim down some papers for my first card. And while I am trimming down my cardstock, what I'm going to do is separate my dies. And then I'm going to take my dies paper and I'm going to pick out the elements that we're going to use for our first card. Now we're going to start off by doing some die cutting first. I know I'm going to put a ghost on one of my cards and I want one of the thought bubbles. And I'm thinking if you've got it, haunt it. It's really cute. I'm going to use this on my card. So I'll die cut this one out. And then I'm also going to use all of these arrows here. We're going to separate my arrow here. And then I'm also going to separate my... my thought bubble. Now I'm going to line them up. It's very easy to do. Take a piece of tape to help tape them down so they don't shift. I don't even even have to, since you have a little bit of extra room on this dice paper, um, there's not going to be any border, which is really nice. So if you just line it up, you have a little wiggle room on placement. It doesn't have to be exactly lined up because the colors overlap the dies. Okay, so I'm going to run all of these through my die cut machine and also this thought bubble and I'll be right back. I have everything die cut out and we have the arrows and then we have the speech bubble that have the epoxy shapes that go with them. What I love is Photoplay also has in their epoxy dies paper there's some greetings or sentiments down here that are strips that all you do is trim them out and you're good to go. And I do want to mention these don't have the epoxy to them, but they're nice strips that you just trim away. So I'm going to put these away and I just did it. I die cut this out right in this panel. If you wanted to trim these out, you could very well do that, but I just left them on the panel. Okay, we'll put these back. I'm going to bring in my epoxy shapes. Let's take these out of the package. This has a protective cover over the top. I suggest you keep these on there because this prevents scratching on your epoxy shapes. Okay, so keep your keep your plastic cover on them. And what I'm going to do is pick this up. Okay, just take it out, recover it up, and then I'm going to layer this right over my thought bubble. You want to be careful not to get any fingerprints on there, but it layers beautifully. And you can see it almost looks like jewelry. And it's instant and it really doesn't have too much bulk, which is nice. It adds dimension, but not that much dimension. So these are super fun and super neat. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with our arrows here. Well, I or arrow shapes. There's a real arrows in here and then there's arrow shapes. I thought we would do an entire row of these arrow shapes. I'm just loving this. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add my epoxy to all of my arrows here. Okay, I'm going to push down on these really good. And I do want to say that there's a little bit of forgiveness. So if you get it in the wrong spot, you can actually lift it up and remove it. Um, unless you push down on them like I'm doing now. But if you push down on them, it really adheres that paper to the adhesive on the back. But now we have some fun epoxy shapes that are perfect for our cards. Let's put this aside. And we're going to jump in and start with our very first card. First, what we're going to do is take a panel that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I'm going to layer this directly on my card base. My card base today is a side folding card base. Now I also die cut out a rounded rectangle. This is using the photo play paper, say it with stamps. 
A2 rounded rectangle die set. It has stitch detail around the edge. I just love that. This is going to go directly on the front of my card. And then I have two strips of pattern paper. This here is one inch strip and then we have a half inch strip. We're going to layer this to the left, leaving a little bit of that pink showing. And then I'm going to take my diagonal stripe paper and we're just going to layer this directly over that pattern paper. Sometimes stripes will tone down a busy pattern and anything overhanging will trim off. Lovely. Okay, we have, this is a little less than one and a quarter inches tall by four and a quarter inches wide. I thought we would put our epoxy shapes on here. These are very easy to adhere. You could use glue or your tape runner. And if we're gonna, maybe I'll have my arrows going this way. I'm going to start with the first and the last arrow. And I'm also going to bring in my ruler. I have a T-square ruler that I'm going to help, that's going to help me line up these arrows. Okay, next we're going to add our next layer. Okay, I'm just finishing up with my spacing. And I'm loving the way this looks. Okay, I'm going to take this panel. Let me show you. You see that shine? I'm going to take this panel and put foam tape behind it. And I'm going to remove the release paper. And I'm going to place it so the black arrow is on this side here. And I'm going to place this across my card base. Now let's bring in our stickers and our rub-on transfers. So I went ahead and I trimmed two bats out now. And there's plastic still on it. What I'm going to do is remove the backing carefully. You don't want to scratch it. So just remove the backing and then you can place this anywhere you'd like on your background. Let's kind of play around with our placement. I think, I think that's a good spot and then we'll add our larger bat. You just, again, just remove that backing. And there is a little tack to it, you can see. Not, it's not a complete sticker, but it, you, there is a little bit of tackiness to it. Once you're happy with the placement, you're gonna press down really good with your hand. And then using the popsicle stick and the rubber and the transfer sheet, you're just gonna go over it. I always like to start in one corner And I rub over it until it's a little bit cloudy. And you just keep rubbing over it and make sure you get the entire image. And then you can use a craft pick and carefully lift it up. I like to go slow because if there's some areas that I missed, they'll still be on here. And you can just take this and reapply it. But how cool is that? And it's nice and smooth. It won't get snug. It definitely won't get snagged in the envelope. The thing is nice is you see how I overlapped on my pattern paper? Your rub-on will go right over it. So again, you just go over your rub-on. And if you are going over extra layers, you want to just press down really good. It doesn't take too much.
Okay. And then you could just lift up the top layer. And how how cool is that? And how neat is this? So we have two fun bats that um that you could put anywhere, even over those extra layers. I'm going to put my rub-ons aside. We're going to be using some for our next card also, along with this epoxy shape. Okay, we're going to finish off with some chipboard stickers. For this card, we're going to use our bat here. And I'm just going to go ahead and tack it down. Have a bat field card and then I'm going to take my sentiment here. I put foam tape behind my greeting and I'm going to add it to these arrows just down the center. We'll tack this down. Now just to make these a little extra cuter I'm going to bring in some Google eyes and I'm going to add Google eyes all three of my bats here. Because I really like playful. Wonderful. I have three different size Google eyes for each size of the bat, which I just think looks adorable. Now I'm going to bring back my sticker sheet. And we have some stars in here. I'm going to take a couple of these and add them to my background also. We're just going to do the same thing. Just remove the backing. Oops. And then I can place the stars anywhere I want them. The nice thing is, is you can place, you can see exactly, with the rub on transfers, you can see exactly where to put it. And if you don't like where you put it, then you can always pick it up and move it. That is a bonus. This just takes no time at all. And lastly, I'm going to bring in my corner round. I'm going to round this top corner here. And that will finish off my first card. Super fun. Lots of textures and dimension. We're going to jump in to our next card. For my next card, we have this pattern paper. This is four inches by five and a quarter. So I'm going to have a little bit of a border of white all around my card base. Let's go ahead and adhere this to the front of my card. Making sure it's right side up. We'll tack this down. And then I have two pieces of pattern paper. This measures two inches wide by four and a half inches tall. This one measures one and a th one and three quarter inches wide. Um, what we're going to do is add a little bit of adhesive down the right side of this. I'm going to tack this. I'm going to layer this on my card here, and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to layer it right over the top, just kind of evenly spacing it. So I have a panel that's almost half and half, and then I'm going to flip this over. We're going to add some adhesive behind here, and I'm going to tack this down to the center of my card. After we have this adhered, I have some of my striped pattern paper. I'm going to use my tape runner. This is going to go over the seam, and then I have a piece of white cardstock that we're going to mat on a panel that measures two and a half inches wide by three and three quarter inches tall. So we have some of those stripes behind it. Let's layer these together. 
Okay, I'm going to bring in my, my rub-ons. And I really liked the spider whip here up, up on top. Let's trim this way. We'll just remove that backing. And then I'm going to place it on this panel in this corner. We're going to go over it. I'm going to use my... Let's see if we got it all here. Wonderful. It's multicolored too. I'm going to show you. So there's some pinks and purples in here. So that's the lovely thing. I just love that there's colors in here also. Now after we have this done, I'm going to take this panel, flip it over. We're going to put a foam tape behind here. I'm going to place this in the center of my panel here. And then I'm bringing in my chipboards for this one. We're going to use the chipboard sticker that says Halloween. And they pop out. It's very easy. The back, you see the plastic back here? It, this is plastic. Let me see. So it's easy for you to push, push them up like this to pop them out. So to pop these out, like again, they just push up from the back which makes it so nice. I'm going to use Halloween. I'm going to place it down here on the bottom. For this card, I'm going to use my, my, um, my little ghost. And you're not going to need any foam squares. We're going to just tack this down. And then we have our epoxy shape. I'm going to go ahead and add some adhesive behind here. And I'm going to add, tack this over here as if our little ghost is talking. And that finishes that card. So cute. Didn't take no time at all. Lots of textures on here. So here's both cards that we made. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today we used lots of fun brand new items from Photo Play Paper. We have the Little Boothing 12x12 collection pack. The pattern papers in there are super fun. We also have brand new transfer sheets and chipboard stickers along with the epoxy shapes and the epoxy dice paper. I hope you get a chance to check out those brand new items and this brand new fabulous collection. Have a great day. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.